What's up everyone, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at a few inequality word problems. So these are the two questions we're going through and let's get started. Now take a moment to read through the first question. And the first thing we could do here is highlight the important information. So we have this girl Maya wants to save at least $1,500 in 12 months. And we're told that she already saved $300 during the first four months. And the actual question here is what is the least possible average amount that Maya has to save in each of the remaining eight months to reach her goal of $1,500? So there's just a few things we have to think about carefully here. This phrase, at least $1,500, we have to interpret this in the context of an inequality. When you hear the phrase, at least, if Maya wants to save at least $1,500, then she either wants to save exactly $1,500 or more than that. So the amount that she has to save, we're going to write an expression over here on the left, but that amount has to be greater than or equal to $1,500. Because remember, at least means $1,500 or more. So the left side is greater than or equal to $1,500. And we're told here that she already saved $300. So that amount is fixed. Plus, and the question is, what is the least possible average amount that she must save in each of the remaining eight months? So if we define the variable x here, x is going to represent the average amount of money Maya saves in the remaining eight months. So if we think carefully here about how we defined x, well, if there are eight months remaining, then to find out how much Maya saves in the remaining eight months, we're going to multiply eight times x. Because if she saves x dollars on average each of the remaining eight months, then if we multiply x by eight, that tells us how much she saves in the eight months in total. So then to solve this question here, all we have to do is just we'll solve the inequality. We're going to subtract 300 on both sides. And now we've got 8x is greater than or equal to 1,200. And then to solve for x, we're just going to divide both sides by 8. And now when this simplifies here, we have x is greater than or equal to 8 goes into 12 once with a remainder of 4, and 8 goes into 40 five times, and then 8 goes into 0, 0 times. So now we just have to interpret this answer. If x is greater than or equal to 150, in the context of the question, that means that Maya has to save an average amount of at least $150 a month for the remaining eight months in order to reach her goal. Okay, so take a moment to read through the second question. And what we're looking for here is we want to find two consecutive even numbers that have a sum that is greater than, and now this part's a little wacky, the sum has to be greater than 98 decreased by twice the larger. And the larger, what we're talking about here is the larger even number. And the task here is to find the smallest possible values for these two integers. So, I mean, we essentially highlighted the whole question, but I guess it is all important here. So we need to define some variables. We're going to say, let x equal our first even number. And then for the next part here, if they are consecutive even numbers, so this is what we have to think about. If I list a bunch of even numbers here, and I could start at 0, but I'll start at 2. The pattern to go from one even number to the next one, consecutive means the one right after. So one right after another. We're not skipping four or skipping six. But to go from one even number to the next, we are adding two. So that means if x equals our first even number, then x plus two is going to be our second even number. So now let's apply this to the details in the question. They're telling us that the sum of these two consecutive even numbers. So what we're going to do here is add them together. We're going to have x plus the second number is x plus 2. And we're saying here that it is greater than, so we're going to throw in our greater than symbol. And now we have next 98 decreased by. This 
phrase here tells us to subtract. Okay, so this is just a different way of saying subtract. So we're going to have 98 decreased by twice. Twice means times 2. So we're multiplying by 2. We could put a multiplication sign here. So minus 2 times the larger. And if x is our first even number, the second even number, this is the larger of the two because it has it's plus two, right? It's a greater number because two is added to it. So that's what's going in parentheses here is the x plus two. So just so we're clear on all this, 98 decreased means subtract, and then twice means multiply by two. The larger even number is x plus two. So then all we have to do here is solve this inequality. So x plus x simplifies to 2x. So we have 2x plus 2 is greater than 98. And now be careful here, we're distributing a negative. So we have to make sure we change the sign both times. So we have minus 2x and then negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. Then from here, we're going to get the x's on one side. So we could go ahead and add 2x to both sides. Now we've got 4x plus 2 is greater than, and we can combine like terms, 98 minus 4 is 94. So then the next thing we want to do is subtract 2 on both sides. And we've got 4x is greater than 92. So then once we solve for x here, we'll see how this works out. And we'll write the result over here that x is greater than, and 92 divided by 4 is 23. Now you might be looking at this and saying, oh wait a minute, x is supposed to be even. But let's think very, very carefully about this. Now we have to interpret our answer. You should be asking yourself, what is the first even number greater than 23? Well, the next integer, 24, is even. So x, in this case, we want to find the two smallest possible values or the smallest possible values for the two integers so we're going to say here that the first number x is equal to 24 and then if x equals 24 then x plus 2 is going to be 26 so these are in fact our two solutions but now let's go ahead and check we're going to verify here that these two do in fact check out okay so now let's check our answer and Let's throw our solution set back into the word problem. So we have the sum of these two consecutive even numbers. So we're going to add our consecutive even numbers, 24 and 26. And it's going to be greater than 98 decreased by twice the larger. And the larger of the two numbers is 26. So now when we simplify this here, 24 plus 26 is 50. And the question is, is 50 greater than 98 minus 2 times 26 is 52? So when we simplify the right side, we have 98 minus 52, and we'll subtract the 1's. 8 minus 2 is 6, 9 minus 5 is 4, and this is in fact true. 50 is greater than 46, so these numbers do check out. But what we have to also verify here is that these are the smallest possible values for the two integers. So the next thing we should check here is, well, what about the next two numbers down the list? If we were to go with 22 and 24, these two consecutive even numbers are smaller than this pair. This is the next pair down the list, and then it would be 20 and 22. But let's see what happens when we plug these particular values into the question. Well, we have the sum of these two numbers is 22 plus 24, and we want to know, is this greater than... 98 decreased by twice the larger. And the larger of these two is 24. So if we work this out, 22 plus 24 is 46. And we have 98 minus 2 times 24 is 48. But when we simplify this, you see how we get 46 is greater than 50. And this is not true. This is a false statement. So what this tells us is that this pair of consecutive even integers does not check out. So that means that 24 and 26 are, in fact, the smallest possible values for our two integers.
Okay, well this is going to conclude this inequality word problem video. If you found this helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, future topics that you want me to cover, leave them in the comments section below. And thank you for watching.